Hi, I'm Peter Tragos, host of the Lawyer You Know podcast and YouTube channel. The saying goes, everyone hates lawyers until you need one. Well, I'm here when you need one to answer your questions and give you insight that you didn't know you needed. Along with my partners, Pete Sardis, the professor, who has a finance and business background, and George Tragos, my dad, and the conciliary, a criminal defense giant, we can answer any questions you have. What's up, beautiful people? Late night here for me. I am tired, but I was talking on Twitter with a bunch of people about this uh, insurance policy. I knew people were going to get mad because I said, maybe I think Amber Heard um, should win this part of the case or Team Amber against the insurance companies. Everybody, I hope, realizes I'm a plaintiff's personal injury lawyer. I literally sue insurance companies all day, every day. Um, It's what I do. Yes, we're just starting. Um, that doesn't mean I think what she did is okay. That doesn't mean I find her credible. That doesn't mean I'm actually team Ham- Amber and any of this stuff. People just get a little too much with that. Okay. Um, most of you are not, most of you are awesome about it. And it's a lot of fun. And a lot of people on Twitter actually have been great, um, uh, talking about this and, uh, having different opinions on it and different thoughts. And it's been really interesting. And to me, it, the first video I did earlier today, two times on Sunday, Um, is we don't know a lot of these facts, right? And we're going to learn a lot and that's how we'll make our decision. We're not going to make our decision right now just because one lawyer said something in a complaint or one lawyer said something in a response. We're not. Um, It is by myself tonight, just FYI. So if I miss some comments or some questions, I apologize, but know that going into it. Okay, I will do my best. I'll answer as many questions, but I do want to talk about a couple parts of this insurance policy. Um, It is very, very interesting and it's always fun. And this is what we do all the time. So I can kind of sift through it a little bit quicker. We are going to jump to the parts referenced in, in the complaint. Okay. By the way, uh, Twitter and Instagram right here at Trago's Law. Uh, that's where I did a lot of this talking. I also know there are other uh, channels going on right now. I guess Runkle and Law and Lumber are uh, dissecting part of this. That's great. Um, anybody should check them out as well. Check out their description of it. Um, I- I'm just giving you my opinion. I can control just kind of going on randomly since it's my channel. Uh, making it as long or short as I want. Uh, So that's why it's fun for me. So that's why I'm here. So let's talk about this insurance policy, okay? Let's bring it up on the screen. And let's look at uh, what it actually says, okay? So it's commercial general liability coverage. There are so many questions that I want to answer. I don't have time to answer all of them, obviously. But this is, people are like, oh, you get this insurance and then do something wrong. It's not fair that, uh, this is the New York, Maine, sorry. Um, It's not fair that insurance picks up the bill. It's like, that's literally what insurance is for. You get drunk, drive, hit somebody, your car insurance will pick it up. You text and drive, car insurance will pick it up. You have a booby trap in your house and somebody gets hurt, homeowner's insurance will pick it up. Um, But very, very interesting to me, the things that the lawyers did not put in the complaint. So let me start out by giving some arguments as to why, if I I represented Amber Heard, here are the arguments I would give. Okay, let's start there. Uh, I think it's on page 53. So let's just go to page 53. All right. The following exclusion is added to paragraph two. The exclusion does not apply. So this is one of the exclusions. Doesn't apply to defamation in the employment phase, okay? Doesn't apply to defamation here in an employment-related arena. Then, payments here, okay? They will pay medical expenses. There are exclusions. And this is why I think it's interesting for lay people. When you read your insurance policy, realize that there are exclusions and things that they will not cover. And I read through just about every exclusion and I don't find intentional defamation or malice, actual malice defamation. What I do read is an exclusion right here. What are they not going to pay? Coverage medical payments to others do not apply to bodily injury or property damage, which is expected or intended by the insured. Okay. Okay. So that sounds like if Amber Heard intended this, 
that's going to be excluded, right? Well, this exclusion does not apply to. Damages arising out of oral or written publications or other forms of defamation that occurred prior to the inception date of this policy. So it references defamation there. That is very interesting. We have other exclusions. We have intended uh, problems and intended things that you intend to do wrong or expect to hurt somebody. This policy will exclude those coverages, but not defamation. Okay? So if I'm ever hurt, I'm thinking I should be fine. Okay? Now, words are important and definitions are important, right? That's what we always say. So let's start out first by looking at the coverage for personal liability. This is a general overview about what this policy does. It covers you, Amber Heard, if a claim is made or a suit is brought. And stick with me, everybody, okay? Because at the end is the punchline as to why I think Amber Heard is going to lose and the big bad insurance company is going to win, okay? That's coming at the end. But first, stick with me here. Just if I'm Amber Heard, here's some of the arguments I'm making. I like to do this. I like to think about both sides. If a claim is made or a suit is brought against any insured for damages because of bodily injury, property damage, or personal injury caused by an occurrence to which this coverage applies, we will pay up to our limit of liability for the damages which the insured is legally liable. And, and, and provide a defense at our expense by counsel of our choice, even if the suit is groundless, false, or fraudulent. We may make an investigation and settle any claim or suit that we decide is appropriate. Our obligation to defend any claim or suit ends with the amount we pay for damages resulting from the occurrence equals our limit of liability. So, some people which is totally cool. I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm not being sarcastic at all. Some people thought that this policy and this million dollars was the total they would pay for attorney's fees, for damages, for everything. That is not the case. This is for a million dollars, I believe is what it is, to pay their limit for damages. And they will pay the defense. So that's why Travelers is coming after them for two and a half-ish million dollars. Because the defense amount is not limited to this million dollars. There are other ways that they can limit uh, how much they're going to spend on attorney's fees. And this clearly says counsel of their choice. That's a separate issue. We're just kind of talking about whether or not they should cover this actual malice defamation. Because that other stuff is a, more of a gray area. Did she breach the contract by not including their lawyers? Did they have a chance to talk about which lawyer she would want? Separate, separate issue. But let's just stick to actual malice, intentional defam defamation, okay? So this $1 million limit is not all-inclusive. We call those all-inclusive or a self-depleting policy. That's very unusual in the general liability, auto insurance or homeowner's insurance arena. So... That would be very um, interesting and very unusual if this was a self-depleting policy or all-inclusive where that million dollars includes attorney's fees. I will tell you where it's far more common. We see it a lot in our nursing home negligence cases. These nursing homes have self-depleting million-dollar policies, $500,000 policies, whatever it is. So they start paying their lawyers, and that eats into the money that our client could potentially collect. Those cases are litigated very differently. Let's just kind of keep that to the side, okay? So... If you'll notice in this paragraph, there are some words that have quotations around them. Insured, bodily injury, property damage. And I'm going to focus here on personal injury. Something they would cover. Because you have bodily injury, which is a slip and fall, car accident, you know, broken bone, whatever. That's a bodily injury usually. Those are bodily injury coverages in these different policies. But personal injury is something a little different. And this Personal injury in quotations 
is very important. Definitions and words are so important that this insurance policy, as every insurance policy does, which I mentioned in the last video, has a full section dedicated to definitions. So let's take a look at what the definition of personal injury is. Personal injury means other than bodily injury arising out of one or more of the following offenses. False arrest, detention, or imprisonment. Malicious prosecution. The wrongful eviction from wrongful entry into or invasion of the right of private occupancy of a room, dwelling, or premises that a person occupies by or on behalf of its owner, landlord, or lesser. Oral or written publication of material that slanders or libels a person or organization, including other forms of defamation. Oral or written publication of material, including other forms of defamation that violates a person's right of privacy. So this is what they say they're going to cover. Personal injury, which is defamation. If I am Amber Heard, I think I'm covered. Let's take it a step further. Everybody, malice, malice, malice. They found malice. I agree with you. They found malice. It's a jury verdict. It's returned. However, if I represent Amber Heard, check out these other things listed on personal injury that they cover. Okay, false arrest, detention, or imprisonment. Does that sound like a negligent act? I guess it could be. Doesn't seem like it to me. How about malicious prosecution? Malicious, that word, malice, the root word, the root word in the Greek Sure, it comes from some Greek word. But malicious prosecution, that's so interesting to me. The wrongful eviction or wrongful entry into or invasion of privacy could be accidental, I guess. Feels like it could be purposeful or willful. If I am a lay person and I'm just reading this for defamation, I can understand why somebody would think, and maybe a jury would even agree that this is something that could be willful or malicious. Very interesting to me. However, let's get to what you all want to hear. Why I think she's going to lose. I'm doing another one. Uh, why I think she's going to lose here. All right. So words are important. Definitions are important. These quotation marks are important. Personal injury, where we just read that definition. Caused by an occurrence. What does occurrence mean? Because if I'm reading this correctly, in law school, we learn how to break down statutes and break down phrases like this. So the only personal injuries that are covered in this policy are ones caused by an occurrence. So just a, a regular personal injury, how we want to define it doesn't matter because it has to be caused by an occurrence. Now let's go back down to this all important section of definitions and see if we can find that word in quotation occurrence. Oh, look at what do you know? Personal injuries right here. The next one is occurrence. And what is an occurrence, people? We can say it together because I think you're all going to like this one. Occurrence means an accident, including continuous or repeated exposure to conditions, which results during the period in bodily injury, property damage, or personal injury. Interesting, right? 
So if I represent the insurance companies, which I never would, I would quote this definition paragraph that says, it's only personal injuries that are caused by an occurrence and an occurrence is an accident. And this is tough for lay people that don't have these policies explained to them, but my opinion, that's a pretty good argument that it's actually written in this policy within the definition of personal injury has to be caused by an occurrence, which has to be an accident. And in case there was any confusion in paragraph six, they say the occurrence applies to letter B, which is, sorry, letter C, which is a personal injury. And there you have it. Definitions are important and words are important. And what the policy says is important. And this is an interesting policy. It's got advertising in it, injury, injuries that come from advertising. It's got defamation. It's got slander. It's got libel. It was written for somebody like Amber Heard, who is an influencer. Um, it is very interesting, this type of insurance policy. It's unusual. It's not like the normal policies we um, see every day in car accidents or homeowners insurance. Uh, so that's why I feel like this is fun. And this is interesting to me to talk about these things. Um, and, and until we read the policy, we don't know. I, again, I think I can make an argument for Amber Heard while, why this is confusing and malicious prosecution is right next to defamation and it covers that. So why would it not cover malicious defamation? They don't define defamation. I don't see a definition of defamation in this policy. So I get it. I get it. Really interesting. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this too. So the other questions that have followed. So why would they pay at all? As we looked in, saw the pay for defense section, they'll pay for the defense even if it's a false claim, even if it doesn't have a lot of merit, they are still obligated to pay for the defense. And yes, I've seen the facts and people say he glossed over the fact that they tried to provide her with counsel. That's fine. That's what they say. I would like to see what they actually did to try to provide them with counsel. Because I've seen interest. And by the way, well, sorry, I'm getting all over the place here. It's late. This is kind of an off the rails one already. But I have seen insurance companies say that they have done things to provide defense or provide um, help to their insureds when I disagree. I don't think they actually did. I don't think they made a fair offer. I don't think they represented the client appropriately. I don't think they kept the, the insured in the loop enough. So just because they say it, I'd like to hear more facts if that's okay. And this is a part of the case that I'm going to hear more facts on before really digging into these um, uh, this case and this fact, these facts and these causes of action. Um, there was another question I was going to answer. can't remember what it was. Um, but yeah, so she has the right to choose her counsel according to travelers. And we just read in this uh, NYM policy that they have the right to choose the attorney. So maybe they have different policy languages. I think that's something else we're going to flush out because these insurance companies don't often go head to head against each other. Yeah, you can commit accidental defamation, I guess, but I think that's unfair to insure somebody for this defamation and then pull the rug when it actually happens to them. But I mean, can you really feel bad for Amber Heard? That's the other problem, right? Can you feel bad for her? I don't feel bad for her. I just think it would be nice if they paid the million bucks to Johnny Depp. So Anthony, I see her, Anthony, and a couple of the people asking uh, how they can get a specific legal opinion. So I don't give legal opinions on here. If you want to email me, lawyer, you know, at gmail.com. We handle personal injury cases, uh, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, slip and fall, negligent security, premises liability. Um, if you have that kind of case, please reach out to us. We'd love to help you. Her insurance rates are probably going up, Mo. Yes. Uh, Lisa Ann Frazier, I'm not sure. I didn't block anything. I don't. I can't control Facebook or anybody else. Yeah, Moderma, if you're here, I did think it was interesting, so I'll put it up on the screen again. You guys don't need to see my face here. 
So it is interesting that in the definition for personal injury, where we see the defamation paragraphs here, malicious prosecution is right above them as something that's covered. So that malice is, is interesting, really interesting. Really interesting to me. But yeah, I think she loses. I think she loses. I, I kind of thought she was going to lose anyways. It's funny because it seems like a lot of people forgot that in the beginning. I said, there's no way they're going to cover her for this intentional conduct. There's no way because insurance companies never do that. But then I see that there's defamation and malicious prosecution and all this stuff in this little special uh, section of what they cover. So it's very interesting. Very interesting. Chase, welcome in. Yeah, I apologize to anybody that's just kind of randomly jumping onto the stream because we are very into the weeds, which a lot of people seem to um, want from our Twitter discussions and our Instagram discussions. So it's fun. You know, it's, it's really interesting. Um, so I appreciate everybody jumping on here. Uh, let's see here. Let's get to a couple questions. Uh, Amanda, Diane, loved your earlier video. You are truly objective and I agree with you. I always root for the little guy, but in this case, do you truly consider AH the little guy? She's a well-known celebrity. Yeah, this is a case full of big guys, right? So Neil, there are two suits going on. Travelers is suing NYM to say they have to pay for part of the fees and NYM is suing Amber Heard and it's all for declaratory judgment to have a judge or a jury say, this is what has to happen. This policy does not cover this. They do have to pay those, those defense rights. They did try to provide her a defense. She rejected it. Somebody needs to make those decisions because these parties can't come to an agreement on it. Uh, Joe Gottman, why are insurance policies so long and not easy to read? There's two reasons. Number one, they want to give themselves a million outs and exclusions so they can deny claims. And I, I truly believe sometimes they don't really care if, this is just my opinion, if their insured actually understands the policy. I can't tell you how many people I know that pay extra to stack a policy when they only have one car and they don't get any benefit from stacking it. Um, and they don't even know what kind of insurance they have. They're told they have full benefits when in, in uh, reality, they actually have minimum benefits. Uh, it's really sad. Uh, the second reason is because lawyers are trying to CYA and cover their butts on everything. So they want to make sure they say, well, if this, then this, this exclusion, but not here. Yes, here, not there. So they do have to write a million paragraphs, clarifying and defining everything that they write. Uh, somebody said, good, Carolyn. Thank you. Yeah, I saw a bunch of them. Some of them are so hard to answer on Twitter. Um, they are long because lawyers wrote them. Absolutely true, Dominic. All right, let's see what else. Could Johnny come in as an interested party? Uh, not necessarily, but his lawyers could help represent Amber to, make, to try to help uh, force the insurance company to pay. Oh, here's what I was going to say. Remember when I blanked earlier because it's late? Um, a lot of people saying, you're an idiot. You must not know anything. Insurance companies never pay for intentional conduct. That's false. That is verifiably and factually false. I have absolutely had insurance companies pay on intentional conduct. And I will just leave it at that. Stacking American Princess. We should do a whole video on insurance policies, what you should look for, because uh, it's really important and sad. I hate when people call me and think they have certain coverage to protect themselves and they actually don't. Um, stacking is, for example, if you have a 100, 300 policy, 100 per uh, person, 300 per occurrence. So you get in a car accident, you hurt three people. Each of them have 100,000. If you hurt five people, the max is 300,000. Uh, 100 per person, 300 total. If you have stacking in three cars, well, now that 100, 300 policy you have turns into 300, 900 because each side is stacked three times and it's a cheaper way to get more insurance. So it's cheaper to stack it than to get a 300, 900 policy on its own. It's actually, it would be a 300, 500 policy. So you have more coverage, usually for cheaper. It's kind of a bundle type of thing. But if you pay extra to stack it with one car, you're not getting any benefit. Yes, everybody read your policy. Chance, catching up on your videos. I just got back from Florida apartment hunting. I love it. 
Did you end up looking in the Tampa area or somewhere else? I think you said you were considering Orlando. Uh, keep me, keep me posted, man. And yeah, you'll, you'll definitely need some ketchup on these. Kind of like a hot dog. <laughs> uh, John O'Rourke in a roundabout way, technically an AH win here is a win for Johnny Depp, right? Yes. In my opinion, yes. There's no way they put this money in her pocket. So if they are forced to pay the million dollars, it would be to pay the damages to Johnny Depp. That was my point earlier about why we should be on Amber Heard's side and why Johnny Depp may even be on Amber Heard's side and everybody trashed me for it. But try to explain it. Everybody likes the idea of an insurance policy. That's good. Yeah, I think I will do that. And I'll do it as a live so you guys can ask general questions, not specific questions, but general questions about what does this mean? What does that mean? And maybe we'll look at an insurance policy too. Oh man, Tori, this has happened to us. And what's so horrible is Uber and Lyft used to have underinsured motorist coverage. Randomly, they got rid of it for all of their drivers, all of their passengers. They used to protect them. They got rid of it and they sent it to everybody. I think in like a, you just click the, I agree for new terms and services and none of the drivers even knew it. So we have a bunch of cases that are kind of older that have it. Then we signed up some cases, come to find out the new policy doesn't have UM. It's terrible. Why does she have two concurrent policies? So the policies, I haven't read the whole traveler's policy, but I think the traveler's is homeowner's insurance and this is general liability, like commercial liability coverage. So they technically cover some different things, some similar things. Sometimes people have umbrella policies. You can have multiple policies that cover uh, a similar injury. Tampa area like that better for sure. Good chance. Good decision. Mo, my house had a pipe burst because no one was there for a couple months and the whole house molded over, insured covered zero of it. That hurt. What state are you in? Because this has happened to some people in Florida and we've worked with them and we even have some other lawyers that we work with on these types of um, cases. And we've been able to get a lot covered uh, that they deny the first time, which is not uncommon. They almost always deny it the first time. Azam, insurance policy lecture by Peter Tragos. Love it. It's getting clearer to me now. The only thing I hope AH wins. So does this mean she can't pay Johnny now because she's broke? Who knows? But it seems like maybe she has more money than we think because maybe she didn't have to pay all these attorney's fees that she said she did under oath. Melanie, this is a, another gray area, what responsibility insurance agents have, because a lot of people can just do it on their phone now and they don't even talk to an agent. If they misrepresent something to you on a recorded phone call, of course, there's recourse, but it's tough. And a lot of times people have the same coverage for 10 years and they don't even remember who their agent was or their agent's gone. Tori, Peter, do you get paid after you when your cases are up front? On criminal cases up front um, for our firm, on our cases, on injury cases, we get paid out at the end out of the settlement. It's a percentage of the settlement. It's contingent fee. If you lose, we lose. If you win, we win. Um, that's how we build them. I think that's great because everybody's on the same team, same page. The more money you get, the more money we get. We're not trying to settle your case short. I think that's good. Well, Travelers Cover Repeal, Karen, it kind of feels like that. It kind of sounds like that because they want um, they want New York or the New York Marine policy to pay what they've already paid and help them continue to pay. Very interesting. All right, about two more minutes. I'm tired. I should be in bed. About two more minutes here and then I'm going to bounce. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, Melanie Casio. Uh, not to be a smart A, but there's more than one definition uh, definition of, for defamation. There are kind of different nuances to it with public figures, with accidental publication. Maybe you meant to send a, a DM and you actually posted the tweet, whatever it may be. I kind of agree with you. I think defamation is you say something to hurt somebody and cause them damage. That's what I think of it as, right? Um, but there are some different nuances to the definitions. 
So that, that's, and that's what I'd argue if I was her. Defamation is saying something to hurt somebody that isn't true because if it's true, then it's not defamation. Um, but theoretically, I guess there are, or, or technically or literally, I guess there are. Mo, oh, you're talking about for your uh, property damage claim? Uh, I, I'd have to see, I'd have to check into, I've never done one in Maryland before, so the laws are probably different. Those laws are very state specific, but uh, I'll see if I know somebody in the area that handles those claims, maybe at least look at it. As far as I know, Uber does not have UM insurance. They have bodily injury. If like an Uber driver hits you, they have bodily injury coverage. But if you're in an Uber and somebody else smashes into your car and that other person doesn't have insurance, Uber used to have insurance to cover you and your injuries. Now they don't. Uber and Lyft. Last I saw, I should say. It's, it's ever-changing. Thank you for the bedtime lecture. Sweet dreams. All right. So Lisa, I'll just finish with this. I answered it already. Policies, when they expire, anything that happens, um, anything that happens in that policy period is covered under that policy. Whether you're sued for it 10 years from now or whenever you're sued for it, it's whatever you had during that time period. So this happened when the policy was in effect. It doesn't matter, matter whether it's still in effect right now. In John O'Rourke, we will finish with this comment. This is for Mrs. Tragos, the boss. That's right. She just got home. So we're going to go hang. Um, you guys take it easy. Patty Joe, perfect one to end on. Good night, Peter. It's past your bedtime. Yes, it is. Good night and good luck, everybody. Hit the like button on the way out. You guys are the best. Take it easy.